Hello, I hope everyone is doing okay. Today we're gonna do um, an interesting lesson on color mixing. So I have got here with me the colors that I normally order for all the classes that I teach. And it's a selection of primary colors. I only use one color that is not a primary. And I have them all in their cold and warm versions, okay? So we have here titanium white, lemon yellow, cadmium yellow deep, cadmium red, crimson, Prussian blue or pithalo blue, cerulean blue, and I add a secondary color that is permanent light green okay so let's go back this one lemon yellow is a cold yellow the cadmium yellow people confuse it with orange but it's actually a warm yellow okay this one is our warm red this one is our cold red the crimson the pithalo is our uh, cold blue and this one is our warm blue okay so that's just to get started and um, so if you only have three colors if you only have three primaries yellow red and blue and it's a mix of warm and cool it will only give you a very very limited palette by having the cold and the warm versions of all three primaries you're going to be able to achieve a much wider range of mixes of colors, yeah? So, a lot of people mix by learning loads of color theory, doing loads and loads and loads of reading, um, which is always really, really good to do. Color theory is really, really fascinating. And other people know more about color through instinct and experimentation, trial and error. Both routes are good. I would suggest that if you actually do a little bit of mix of both, you will get much better results. You're gonna to have to also be patient with me because I have been in lockdown for how many weeks? Um, I don't know, I think it's been like eight weeks now. So um, I'm, a, I'm a little bit rusty. That means that I'm, I'm a little bit out of practice. So I might not be as, as good as I normally am. So. We're going to be mixing uh, a range of colors. I'm going to be making two videos. One of them with colors that we normally use for, I don't know, landscapes, animals, and general topics. And then I'm going to make another video that is going to be exclusively about skin tones for um, when we paint people, okay? So let's get started. So first of all, the yellows, I'm just gonna think in terms of a rainbow and how the rainbow moves. I think it's, it might be a good idea. So the yellows, I've already got them mixed. I just wanna show you quickly what happens if you mix both the yellows. So my cool, I've got my cold lemon yellow and if I put a little bit of the cadmium, nothing much happens, it just softens it. But the good thing that happens when you mix those two is if you want to put a little bit of white, you get a nice creamy color, yeah? So I'm going to leave that there. So from here, I'm going to move to oranges. And I want to show you what happens when you mix orange out of cadmium red. And I'm always going to use the cadmium yellow to mix orange, yeah? So that's pretty bright orange, that's very good. And then let's have a go. As you're noticing, every time I mix a color, what I'm doing is that I'm cleaning my brush in between. So I'm gonna try it as well with a crimson. Mm, pretty interesting, yeah? So it ends up being quite different. That one is a lot duller and that one is a lot richer. This one seems to be have like a higher chromatic intensity. And let's put a little bit of white and see what happens. So adding white to your mixes is a really, really good way as well of assessing the color that you're doing. Wow, check that one out.
Yeah. So there we got our oranges. We are going to go into ochre before doing anything else. And I'm going to try and get it right because ochre is quite difficult. But if you have a palette of very, very rich colors, you must also have a palette of dull colors. And ochre is a good one, kind of like a little bit dull, a little bit rich, a little bit in between. Okay, so I've got my cadmium red and my cadmium yellow. And what I'm gonna do to this one, I'm just gonna add a tiny touch of cerulean blue. Ooh, and there we go. Got kind of like um, a little bit of a dull, dark ochre color. Okay, that's a really good color to balance your rich ones and very colorful ones. So it adds a little bit of dullness. I'm gonna continue to add a little bit more and see what happens. I arrive to kind of like a beige color. Yeah, very, very good dull one. I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow for you to see what happens if I, oh, sorry, white, if I do that, okay. So, here we go, more or less oranges that are secondary colors. That means a secondary color is a color mixed from two primaries. The primaries are the colors that we cannot mix, okay? So the yellow, red, and blue, we cannot mix. So once I've got this, I am going to move on to purples. Purples are a little bit hard to mix. They're not that easy. So first of all, I want to show you what happens if I do it with this one, the cadmium red, and I'm going to do it with this one, with the cerulean blue. And I basically arrived to a color that is not purple at all, okay? It's more like a rose, dark rose color. And if I add a little bit of white, you'll see. So it's basically a failure of a purple, okay? Now, let's see what happens if I do it with a warm red, my crimson. And I'm going to do this one with the Prussian blue or Pithalo blue. And as you can see, the amount of pigment in the Prussian blue is incredibly, incredibly strong. So I'm going to need quite a lot more crimson in order to make it purple. And there I have a go. Wow, check that color out, guys. Beautiful. And I'm just going to put a little bit of white for you to see. And if you want to make it a little bit richer, you can just add a little bit more of your crimson. Okay, and now I'm going to show you what happens if I mix my beautiful crimson. That is great for making purples. And I'm going to add a little bit of the cerulean blue. Okay, so that gives me a purple that is a little bit more towards magenta, a little bit, too, a bit more towards violet. I'm just going to add a little bit of white for you to see the difference yeah so that's a range of purples now I'm gonna move on to greens and different browns bye bye palette so <clears throat> first of all I'm gonna go greens oh and turquoise as well so turquoise is a color that everyone loves and it's very, very easy to mix if your cerulean blue is clean. At the moment, my cerulean blue is a little bit dirty, which might mean failure. So I'm just gonna try and get rid of some of those colors that I didn't clean my brush properly. That's it. Okay, 
So, I'm gonna get cerulean blue, yeah, and I'm gonna get lemon yellow. Hold on, I'm gonna be a good girl and catch it with a different brush. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of lemon yellow. And look, beautiful turquoise. So it's just cerulean blue and lemon yellow, yeah? We can add a little bit more lemon yellow and let's see what happens if we do. It looks quite green, more like an aqua color. Yeah, so that's if you add more lemon yellow. And let's have a go at adding a little bit of white and seeing what happens. That really dulls it down. And let's try it on the aqua. Mmm, nice color. Okay, so those colors are really, really good for painting the sea, I would say. Let me get a little bit more kitchen towel. All right. So, <clears throat> from these ones, we're gonna continue mixing greens. And seeing that I've got this here, I wanna show you how to make lime green. So for lime green, I'm going to get loads of lemon yellow. And I'm gonna add just a tiny touch of cerulean blue. And there I've got lime green. Okay. I'm gonna clean that up. So if you're painting trees, one of my favorite greens for painting trees is I'm gonna grab a little bit of the cadmium ever yellow. Yeah, cadmium yellow, a bit dirty. And to this one, I'm gonna add just a tiny touch of my Prussian because as you remember, the Prussian was so, so, so highly pigmented. Okay, so that's kind of like a lighter version of it. Let's put it a little bit more. There you go. That's beautiful green. And I'm gonna make it a little bit darker. So that's a really, really good color for painting trees. Okay. Now, if you mix Prussian Blue and Lemon Yellow, you come out with a completely different green. Hold on, I'm gonna need quite a lot of Lemon Yellow in my mix, actually. Check out how different that is. So, as this color work, would work really well for trees and for grass, this one would work really well for the sea. You kind of arrive to um, Caribbean blue type of color, yeah? And I'm gonna add a little bit of white for you to see what happens to that with white. Nice, very lovely stormy weather kind of see. So <clears throat> from here we're gonna go to a color that is duck egg kind of color. And it's a really good one for backgrounds. I use it loads on my backgrounds for paintings because it's kind of like a neutral color. Um, and that one was... A bit of this one. A little bit of so basically you've got both blues and then I'm gonna grab a little bit of that. I'm gonna mix them together and on its darkest form uh, 
thing it blew home. There we go. So only darkest form is kind of like a pet petroleum green blue. But if I add white to it, look at that. Wow. So it's a really really good color for backgrounds. And especially if you start start sticking a little bit more yellow. And I'm gonna make a lighter version. <clears throat> A bit mixed with purple but it'll survive okay so those colors would be <clears throat> also very good to do trees in a distance because they're kind of gold and the petroleum color would be good for painting also a river or lake okay so we've got quite a few greens now the reason that I have this pre-mixed <clears throat> Um, it's because it's more permanent and when you're doing your lighter greens they when you when you're adding lemon yellow lemon yellow is very very translucent color and it hasn't got too much pigmentation and you would need like lots and lots and lots and lots of layers for it to have coverage so if you have a light permanent green and you mix it with lemon yellow you can have some really really light uh, green colors especially for grass and for trees that will have more permanence okay so i've got my greens palettes i've got my purples and my oranges and now we're gonna move on to browns and blacks and that's gonna be it so brown brown is a mix of red cadmium yellow we mix an orange first and i'm gonna separate this into two i'm gonna show you a brown with cerulean blue So it's a quite a, if I add more, more cadmium, I will get kind of like a really warm. So this is a really, really good dull color to have in your palette as well, same as the ochres, yeah? If I add a little bit of white to that, I've got kind of like a beige color. It might look yucky, but look how beautiful the bounces of the orange. You need dullness to make a bright color brighter. I will repeat that as many times as I can. And out of this one, I'm gonna get a little bit of this one. I'll show you what happens if I put a cold blue rather than a warm blue. The result is still pretty warm yeah because i've got all that cadmium in there that is super warm and i'm gonna put a little bit of white and show you the difference in the lighter version okay if you want to make a really dark brown your best bet is to start off with crimson instead of cadmium and then you're gonna stick a little bit of Prussian. Don't put too much, remember. And then I'm gonna stick some cadmium. It's still a little bit purplish, so to offset it, calm it down, I'm gonna add a little bit of Lemon yellow. Okay, and there I've got a really nice, very rich dark color. You can carry on making darker by adding more blue, and you can also change it a little bit by adding a little bit of cadmium. And let's see the results with some white. It's kind of purplish that one. 
Okay. Yeah, they're kind of purple. They're not very brown. Sorry, guys, I failed there a little bit. So, this takes me to the last color that I want to show you how to mix. And it is what I call black. It's not really black. So, black is a color that um, doesn't exist in nature. Therefore, painters in the old days didn't like to use Nowadays, contemporary art has got loads of black straight from the tube, loads, and there's a variety of amazing blacks to use. So I'm not going to tell you don't use black, but if you're a beginner, it might be a good idea to learn how to mix very, very dark colors that you can pass on as, as dark. The first thing you need to understand is that acrylic paint, if you're painting with acrylic, dries darker than what it is when it's wet. Okay, so I'm gonna show it to you mix and you're gonna say, ah, that's not dark enough. But then if I would show it to you, to you dry, you would say that actually looks like black. More important than to try to pass it as black is more about the grays that you can do with it, yeah? So, <clears throat> what you do is, there's many different ways, by the way, of how to mix a dark color than blue, but I'm just gonna show you the one that works best for me. So I'm gonna get crimson. And I'm gonna add on my Prussian or Pithalo Blue. And I wanna get a really good purple before anything happens. Now, the Pithalo Blue is a lot more pigmented, so normally I need a little bit more red to balance it out. And trust me, guys, this takes a lot of trial and error. It's a really difficult color to mix. Sometimes I get it right, sometimes I don't. Okay, so you basically got a purple. It's quite bluish at the moment. And a bit more red. You got a very, very dark purple. And then what you're gonna do is that you're gonna add on lemon yellow. And lemon yellow neutralizes it. And it's still pretty bluey. So I'm gonna add a little bit more lemon yellow. And I'm gonna add a tiny touch of cadmium. But not much. Now, this color looks kind of like Mm, but if it would dry, it would dry very, very dark. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of white for you to see. Nice gray. And then if you wanted um, more neutral, you can just add more lemon yellow and a little bit more cadmium. But when you add more of these yellows, you have to do it very little by little so that it doesn't go into a green or browny color. Yeah, so that's a really nice grey there. Sorry, so my white is so dirty. There we go. Hmm, nice colour for clouds. All right. And I'm going to leave it here for today. And next week what I'm going to do is that I'm going to give you some... I'm going to uh, teach you how to make some samplers of different painting techniques. But at least you would have some idea on colour mixing. Um, Please have a go at home with whatever you've got and try to experiment. The more you experiment, the better your color mixes will come. And have a lovely, lovely day and hope you enjoyed this video. Bye bye.